I want to know when I can get my Star Trek VR game where I can get Riker pregnant on the holodeck. Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how to's, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Old Man Vin here in our beautiful downtown Athens studio, switching the bits, driving the nightmare train. That is Linux Gamecast Weekly, joined every week by the man up north, where it's starting to get just a little warm. Just a little warm. No, it, it, it's trying, and then it's, it's like no, thinking cold, about cold, heating up. Cold, We're talking cold, about the frigid, rain. barren wasteland which is Canada, and the man who's excited for it to rain, well, he's in the right place because he wants to test his latest hand-warming <laughs> lotion, Pedro yes. Mateus, and together with your Shadow Realm Dynamic, helping us form Cocaine Voltron. Two canes, baby. All the way down. Playing with a bunch of stuff. If you are keeping an eye over on Interfacing Linux, I have a thread of like all the shit I buy for potential ideas of like, ah, I might do a video on this, might do a guide on that. And I've talked about it. I don't know if I've talked about it on the show, but the HP Elite Desk, right? You've probably seen them. And for a long time, they were like Core i3s and crap like that. They're the little one liter, little tiny, tiny. Like you, I was always fascinated. I'm like, there's a computer in there? And an x86 computer? It had my interest, but I'm like, yeah, it's as to too wimpy. Then about four years ago, they started dropping Ryzen's in them. Or Epic. Yeah, not Epic. Ryzen's. Brain. Yeah, no, the, the, the 24 core one liter. Yeah, CPU. hell yeah. Let's go. They actually make that motherboard, though. For embedded systems. It exists. Of, of, the of, of course case. they do. Because why not? Yeah. Uh, so, socket AM4, like, legit 2400 GE with, like, changeable RAM and NVMe drives on them, like, that's neat. Let me. Oh, it's seven hundred dollars. Get rocked. Fast forward four years. Good old socket AM4. These things. I don't. I don't know why, but somebody's just dumped a boatload of these things. They're all over eBay. They're all over Amazon. They're used. You can get them refurbed. Eight gigs of RAM, NVMe drive in them, twenty four hundred GE with Vega integrated graphics for a hundred bucks. Pretty yeah. decent. <laughs> I want to see. What you can and cannot get up to. Tune into the pre pre <laughs> super shows where we find out one thing it's not good at so far. My ass, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> Video uh, encoding and decoding and uh, sending the audio back without dropping. Haven't given. Well, I'm really stressing these boxes too, man, because like with the virtual webcam and NDI coming in both ways, and like there might be some room to play around with it, but. Uh, yeah, I, I just want to see if I can get like a little box set up. I've already got Linux on it, and there's a couple of steps to it. I want to see what it works, what doesn't. And then I found out that you can buy a video card for it. But I'm trying not to mess with that right now because it also requires a different power supply. But yeah, keep your eyes peeled. If you see one, maybe consider pick it up. There's some other stuff that you're going to want to buy in addition, though. Consider that $100 is your starter kit. <laughs> there's there's a, <laughs> couple of quality of life things that you absolutely need to do before um and i think it's a good idea because you know people talk about you know the first thing i won't compare it to a raspberry pi 4 you're thinking yeah performance per watt though right that's the one thing the raspberry pi 4 just decimates it on but what is the performance per pain in the ass <laughs> the the, <laughs> the time, time to get ass. started yeah. <laughs> to get to get something up and running you're like oh i, I want to run steam let's race See how long it takes you to get up and running. You have to deal with FEX on the uh, yeah, bo bo box eighty six <laughs> right, or something. No, yeah, uh, I'm sorry. I, no, I just typed in Neptune. So I'm done. I'm already playing game. You guys, how, how you doing? Over there? <laughs> so uh, yeah, and of course I'll put some furry marks on it too, and just just to torture test it because you know the donut, the yeah, donut demands yeah, hardware porn. Uh, that'll be it, Jordan. Hey, have, have you uh, come up with any uh, new cardiovascular? Um, tips and tricks for us this week <laughs> um no no unfortunately i had to i had to go plumb the youtube comments to like understand how my, my heart and lungs work oh. uh but i now have come to new realizations uh and am now in the enlightened state um or at least that's what the fatigue toxins in my brain what are you're telling saying me. is you've taken up smoking uh, more. Yeah. more, more, more. Yeah. Well, I, you know, could you ever imagine you know, going back to like smoking a cigarette? 
You know what? This was one of those weeks where I was really? like, man, I regret quitting smoking cigarettes. I really want to just give myself cancer right now. Dude, like one but, of those like things in Athens is it is a novelty to walk somebody, walk by somebody on the street smoking like an analog, like well, the smell. And I'm like, I, wait a minute. I remember that. One of well, the neighbors see, here, uh, she smokes and she goes like um, out in the front door and she smokes there. And I was uh, messing with the car. And as soon as she lit it up, I was like, well, so so it's like I like the the last time I had a smoke was like when like you, you can just buy joints in Canada, right? Like right. I, I was I was walking down the street and, and smoking a joint downtown and it was it was great. I didn't have to give it a second thought. Um but I don't I, I don't know. I, I, I smoke too much weed now. I don't I lost my point. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Pedro Mateus, the uh, car shoe shine, he has the coolest shoe shine because it burns your hands. Yes, it, it, it's a mild solvent, as it turns out. So uh, after you get it into your hands for a few minutes, it starts to burn. I just want to imagine that you put it there and you're like, do it, do it. <laughs> no, I put it on the little uh, what, foam what, applicator. What's it like? uh, no, it's like the fucking scene in Fight Club with the acid. <laughs> no. I put it on the foam applicator and I squished it in and I applied it to all the things that needed applying. And then I was looking around the car. It's like, yeah, no, the the rear end looks really nice. The like the bezels I around the wing mirrors probably does. Go, going to need. Yes, it does have a nice ass. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I started to notice my fingers feel really hot. Oh, uh, <laughs> I grabbed the thing and I read like the bottom warning contains uh, solvent, 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 solvent. Ah, uh, okay, cool. Mushroom, mushroom. <laughs> I should go wash my hair. <laughs> We need to simplify this, man, because Pedro, we were talking about that in the pre pre super shows, and then I was like, I, I want to have a product where it has ing- it just says, you know, contains ingredients. <laughs> Shrug emoji. It'll be dope. You know, it, it would be just it, like it, the, it, 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 it's the mystery can, right? Like, yeah, what, dude, I, I, we're gonna branch out. We're gonna have canned horse, right? Well, I mean, I mean, perhaps, but you won't know what's in the can because there's no label. Just like the the, the goop lying on the sure. floor. It's it's the steam. <laughs> oh, 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 we got there eventually. Labeled. I figured it out. <laughs> All right. uh, the, the steam beta, on the other hand, they're still in the process of figuring out some UI scaling stuff. But they have some they have some fixes out, uh, including uh, some better handling for Nintendo Switch controller buttons. Uh, there are um, some Steam cloud fixes as well, uh, where they weren't syncing some files. There was at least one case where Steam for Linux attempted to launch a Windows game without Proton, so uh, that that is fixed as well. Also, you got to fix that store behavior on Linux, where like nothing on the store page actually renders, because you know the whole point of this is to get the money out of the Linux users' uh, wallets. But yeah, the uh, new new update gets rolled out, and uh, yeah. So we all, I guess we tried out the uh, the new UI scaling, and it, it's certainly better than the old Mano vision that it used to be. <laughs> still, still a little large, though. It was kind of wild, man. It was like the second thing I, I saw there, because like the default 4K, we were like, oh, that's neat. They finally put a scaling option, because it used to be brutal. On it. Yeah, like, yeah, and then getting at the targets and all that, and with the, we clicked it, everyone's first reaction was like, I'm not blind, homie. Um, right. <laughs> this is this is the large print section right. of the it's library. Like, it, right? was, it's comically large. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. If you've clicked on that, well, they've dialed that down to uh, almost 125, percent which is the right amount of percent. It's at 150. That is like, mm, no, we we think everybody is blind. <laughs> not, not, not as blind, blind as before, <laughs> but but still still pretty blind. Dude, another neat thing that they've done with this is they've swapped uh, the. <laughs> I might have accidentally swapped A and B buttons when using the Nintendo GameCube controller, so apparently you weren't crazy this whole time. Mm. You're like, wait, when did I do this? How did this happen? And uh, good news, everybody. Better streaming performance for AMD cards. Gotta stream that deck, boy. <laughs> for the, Do you think there's like a hardcore? If Leave me a comment on the video if you regularly use remote play together. Because we've tried, man just don't find it to be a great experience do i speak for all three of us or what are you like <laughs> fuck off no it's awesome i use it all the time no I'm, yeah. I'm i'm not a big fan of the the remote play the remote play together remote play i've used occasionally 
the odd yeah, time. Yeah, the, the in-home it's, streaming it's okay. makes sense. <laughs> okay, remote play together is what I'm on about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but for the actual multiplayer stuff, yeah. I I think I've tried it maybe one or two times outside of this podcast, right. and it's never it's never great. It it really isn't. Yeah, there's always something, and the latency is very very noticeable. So yeah. Uh, the the thing that the first one that jumped out at me was the fix the slow startup on busy systems. Tell what? me more. I too would like to pull performance out of the ether on occasion. Magic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what? That, that sounds like somebody went. Oopsie. Let me fix it. Right. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, we're, 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 we're we're requesting a little bit too much memory yeah, here. Why, we don't. Why, uh, we don't, why, we don't need why, this. why is there fucking weight? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, the uh, second sleep. one was the like the steam input like the very first one they now have a new configurator option that allows you to straight up swap the left and right analog sticks track pads uh on the steam deck and on steam controller to just swap them with one another so that if you're say left-handed left-handed mode yes (laughs) it makes a lot of sense which uh yeah no i've actually used that on the steam deck quite extensively because i used to do that i changed uh movement to be on the right analog stick and look to be on the left because uh hey left handed <laughs> how how big of a mind screw is it though because like I, i'm i'm just thinking of like a game that has like xbox prompts and you have to you're using a playstation controller and you have to like okay press x okay no that means i gotta press like square or whatever um how does that translate to I gotta now press left on the D pad because that's what the new button is? Oh, uh, it that, doesn't swap that specifically. Oh, okay. <laughs> you can I thought set it went like up. full, full, full on mirror <laughs> mode because that that would like extra fuck you up, wouldn't it? Like, dude, yeah, I, I was you thinking, can like, set how- that up if you want, but it doesn't swap the like the face buttons and the D pad. It's just the trackpads and the analog. When are we gonna get the first controller with OLED buttons? I'm sure Razer is working on it. We just it. make them say whatever we want. Yeah, Razer made the laptops with the <laughs> Yeah, like, you know, AB, CD, whatever. You could just make it yeah. all nipples. Well, there, there, there was the full-on <laughs> keyboard that had, like, each key was, like, a little LED screen. that you Yeah, could, that like... was a Razer blade. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. Uh, and I'm sure it will be $400. Uh, I, I, yeah, I, I'm sure it will be $400 and sold out day one. Yes. SteamOS 3.6. Uh, Calabra. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, L- Ludovico? Ludovico. Ludovico. It's yeah. the v- Vigo, Vigo <laughs> Ludovico. the Carpathian. Denitis. Denitis. Uh, sent over an email. Big, big and it was like, hey. I'm like, hey, what's going on? You're like, we did a thing. It's pretty cool. And I'm like, well, shit. Let's talk about it on the show. And here it is. Yeah. No, apparently, as uh, <laughs> uh, he describes... It was single threadville running updates on the Steam Deck. Uh, they uh, he goes into a little bit of detail of how the atomic uh, image system works because the image that you're currently running, even if you've unlocked the um, the file system and you've made changes, some things will always get changed if there's a major version update that comes with a new atomic image that gets replaced once you uh reboot that atomic image is what's being updated when you run the updates and then once you reboot it loads the new one so there's some detail on the um thing if you've never toyed with endless os or uh the fedora what's the fedora one called silver blue silver blue that's the one and uh yeah no it, it apparently running all of those transactions from the download to the actual uh hashing the current image and re- putting the updates on the new image it was um was all single thread all the way down <laughs> so it is much better now if you like to live the dangerous life and you want to see the new improvements that they've introduced it's in the preview channel you can have a look yeah, the uh, p- so one of the perils of working in open source is sometimes your upstream dependency uh, fucks off and decides to go and you know ra- raise chickens or somewhere on a farm. And this was uh, part uh, this was part of the reason uh, why this blog post came up because they were using a utility called CA Sync to handle uh, some of these operations, um, and that was single threaded. And uh, they were they were debating whether or not should we should we write our own solution? Should we change stuff up? Or what? Uh, they did find this project desync, which is 
in many, in most cases, a drop-in replacement for CA Sync um, did not cover all of the use cases that these guys required. But they sent some upstream patches because Collabora is literally an open source accelerator, and their whole prop point is to throw money at the open source problem. Right. So, the three of us would have been like, that almost does everything I need. Let's continue searching. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> but and, but they're like, oh, you know, what? we'll 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 just finish it off. Uh, and they did. And so now we get some faster system updates. And when we talk about nice. faster, man, this is not small, man. You're looking at 30 to 50% faster system updates with this brand new um, sparkly, sparkly hairdo, uh, Lackerty, cowboy boot, desync, and failed system updates. This is kind of big. Previously, on your deck, if that fucked up like halfway through, do it all again. Start from step one. Now, it's going to have enough smarts to go, you were here. Okay. I'll resume the download from here. That, and that, that's huge. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Especially if you got like bad Wi Fi or bad connection. You're like, mm -hmm. do you remember those days where you'd be like 98% done and somebody would pick up the phone? <laughs> well, well, and, and, and even it's like, oh, I, you know, I gotta, I gotta, like, I wanna play a game on my Steam Deck. Ah, oh, there's an update pending. I gotta, might as well apply it. And then you're just like, oh, well, now I'm waiting like 20 minutes for the fucking thing to re download again and again. Now, now we just need automatic updates, uh, ads. We need some ads on there, and you need to just... Spoilers! Uh, Spoilers! Oh, We're right. not there yet! We're okay. not there yet! All right, fine. <laughs> SteamOS, Android, Waydroid. Pedro, put this in yeah. the show notes. I don't know what it is. It is... Uh, it's, a, it's a teeny tiny little script made by a, a YouTuber, apparently. Uh, but it is very nice, because if you've ever played with Waydroid, that's uh, basically the Wayland Android container that just runs its own little CH-rooted version of Android off of whatever kernel you happen to be running on your desktop distro, and it gives you pretty good Android performance right then and there. And um, one of the things about the Steam Deck is being able to play all the video games that people want, including, maybe, who knows, Roblox. And <laughs> the since the uh, desktop version of Roblox doesn't work anymore, well, uh, people have uh, decided to let's just get the Android version of Roblox not, up not, and running. So the the I, I just want to point this out because I, I find it very humorous. The the document the readme here calls out three specific enhancements that they make to make Roblox work. But in that screenshot of play all the Android games, there is no mention of Roblox, and I wonder if that is to like not flag yourself to the Roblox folks to be like, hey, you know, maybe you should just like shut us down. I think it's more of a, a date thing because that screenshot has been there for a while and uh, mm. Roblox started working on May 1st only. So ah. eh. uh, it might it might just be a date thing. But yeah, no, the script does a bunch of things uh, other than setting up Waydroid. If you've ever set it up yourself, you know that there's a little bit of a step uh, after you, set, you load the Google apps or if you install it right out of the box uh, with the Google apps. You need to add that device as a custom device to your Google developer account. Uh, otherwise, it's just going to keep sending errors to say this is not a registered device. It's not valid. Blah, blah, blah. So you have that little uh, bit to do. And this takes care of that for you. It also sets up the ARM emulation bits. So if you have games that are only available for the ARM um, version of Android. Ar Ar Android. Yes. You can play those games on the Steam Deck or on Linux because it works. Uh, and yeah, no, I, I very much like Waydroid and um, this very good job. It's a nice script. I was digging around on GitHub and I, like there's an open thing of, like improving performance because like all, uh, all out of everything Pedro just said, the only thing uh, the vast majority of people heard like Roblox? Mm -hmm. Roblox. Roblox. It. Roblox. Roblox. Yeah. It's popping up. Uh, so yeah, apparently it does work. No, they're, they're working on improving that experience for you. If that is your uh, current uh, crippling addiction and you've been forced to, you know what? At that point, if I was at the point of running, I don't Android games. I'm like, I just like, well, you know what? We're just going to spool up Windows. You, you, know, you know, I, I also got to wonder, it's like, how, how, how long until Roblox nixes this one as well? Because we're not allowed to have nice things. You know, even they, if those nice, probably, nice things are child labor. Probably looked at it, dude. Probably looked at it. And they were like, that's too much work, whatever. There's like 12 people <laughs> fucking with it. Yeah. Well, 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 once, make... they start, once they start botting and impacting Roblox's bottom line, then they'll start looking at it. You know, it if they're would... legitimate about like, hey, man, like hacking and all this other shit attacks, like, yeah, they're probably not even going to bother with us. 
because mm-hmm. like it's the android version yeah it's the android version are they really going to start fucking with the android version to try and curb the people running lineage os on their x86 desktop linux I, you I, never I, you never know you what never i'm saying know. is this is enough of an edge case that maybe maybe you give that to the fucking intern <laughs> and then they can fuck it up right uh, let them play around with it who remembers this big push a couple of years ago vr was going to be everywhere they were going to be great it was the second coming or third coming i don't know of uh getting faced fucked by toasters it started in the 90s and then we had like a little oculus type thingy you know like oh it's going to be neat open source and facebook body I'm like well there goes that one then valve shows up to the fucking party and they're like hey we got this thing called i don't remember what it was called it was the vive the vive the, the first HTC one dc vive we're gonna make it we put some lighthouses in your room people lost their collective shit and i thought that was a good time i'm like a bunch of people just spent a lot of money to find out that the shit sucks and they did <laughs> however that has not stopped valve from working on steam vr it's still a thing it's still windows only but if we scroll down to this latest update in 2.5, they're doing Linux fixes. It's like somebody at Valve remember, like, hey, right, we do a Linux thing. So, yeah, the Steam, do- oh, right, we should probably, maybe, I don't know. So they've updated SDL. Uh, they fixed the Steam VR home launch script. Uh, apparently, there was an issue with random colors appearing. Just on yeah, the yeah, right yeah. eye, just on the right eye. You, I'm, I'm just imagining that. like the, the scene from like 2001: A Space Odyssey, where you're just like you have your fa- you you have your toaster on, and you're like, I can see through time. Oh no, man, that's the thing. Like the 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 weird colored pixels that you get sometimes when something is not really full screen, but almost. And there's like just the row of single pixels on the right side. That's I'm pretty sure that's what's happening there. Mm. The the well, thing. Is uh, the the very first one on the Linux? It's just add support for direct mode uh, IVR drivers mm-hmm. on Linux. Finally, I might actually need to get the uh, Quest Two back again. <laughs> How far away so, are you, we from being? When's VR gonna die this time? Like, <laughs> I, or you know what? I, yeah, I was gonna like do a thing. I'm like, no, let's just be honest with the audience. When is it gonna die again this time? Because it's pretty much on life support right now. How long did it take for 3D? tvs to die that was a weekend maybe a yeah year. but a okay year. yeah okay so so vr has kind of outlived that i think can it I get think... cheap enough to because that's the only way it rock and rolls like facebook not a fan of them but they're going in the right direction they're, they're I, I, getting I, it I, ground down to you know a 300 i think people are in love with the idea of vr so i think i think people are going to continue to try to make it a thing Am I, am I right saying this, that they are, uh, a lot of us are in love with the idea of going over to your friend's house that has all this bullshit set up. Right, and, right. and that's it, right? Like there, there's, there's the cost requirements, there's the space requirements, uh, added onto the cost requirements is like the computing requirements. You need to have a machine that's good enough. Right. To, especially like, if you want to play with a friend. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, but, but again, like VR is very very inconvenient it turns out that using your computer with a keyboard and a mouse Mm -hmm. is pretty efficient and like trying to map everything onto some pseudo virtual environment doesn't really work it it's cool for like a novelty thing but when you actually want to do something it doesn't quite do it i want to know when i can get my star trek vr game where i can get Riker pregnant on the holodeck that's when i will that's when i will call it call vr here oh it's already a mod to beat saber (laughs) <laughs> it's bridge, com- bridge commander Sorry. no i didn't stutter it's beat saber <laughs> oh yeah it's a different kind of saber right mm. yeah i don't know i don't know the the vr craze is uh played out exactly like i think a lot of us said that's not gonna work people don't like weird shit on their heads i've been saying that this entire time it, it wasn't a revelation i don't think but and a lot of people bought the fuck into it man i, I again i I, th- I think people are People were, were captured by, like, the fiction of VR. And, like, again, w- once the rubber hits the road, you realize it does just kind of suck. It's, like, a worse version of using your computer. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. When it gets to that, like, little low-cost device that you can pop in, like, pop on and be done with it and play around and fuck around. Like, we're, we're still working on, like, resolution, screen door effects. People still getting yakky because they can't handle fucking Taco Bell. And, <laughs> I uh, noticed that I don't get uh, very motion sick. 
but uh, the blurriness, everything is a fucking blurry because it keeps adjusting the resolution on the fly but, oh, right. to try and maintain the 90 hertz. It's like... The, the, the other thing that gets me is like, <laughs> VR seems like a really shit solution for games. It's a really good solution for like training or hazardous like jobs that require like you to like have have some level of context of presence in place. I want like, one of those were like retail employment where they're like doing like the basic ingestion and you're sitting there and they're like, oh, the customer was like said whatever. And like, there's just a knife. Yeah. <laughs> it's <a> pass fail. <laughs> yeah. No, but like, yeah, I, I think they're trying, they're trying to put it into en- entertainment and it's like, it's, it's a better tool for other, other things. It's too much shit. It's got to get simplified, but Hey Valve, thanks for fixing Linux stuff. Cause some people bought this shit and like open XR, it's thing. It's going to get there. It's going to get there. I think there's enough traction where there's enough people still fucking around with it to where we will get that product that is viable. But it's just, you know, it, it was it, less. It, is it, is it going to cost like $1,500, though? Or yeah, that, that's going to be the thing. It, it had that adoption. I remember when I, was, I said it was going to get a bit, roughly the same adoption as people with full racing setups. You know, the pedals, the shifter, the wheel. And all that. Mm, it's about there. Why? Because it's just expensive. Good job. It requires space. <laughs> that, that's another problem, right? Yeah. And, it's like, and then you think about it and you're like, I'd rather be fucked out on my couch, like laying down, playing a yeah. video game, <laughs> like relaxing. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. Sitting on your big butt. Big old honking butts. Two new games to talk about this week. And the first one is, uh, about Viking helmets. Bo- Bobby. <laughs> the Viking helmet and uh, not much of anything else in terms of clothing. It's Big Butt Bobby. And uh, it's a, they, they describe it as a fun 2D platformer uh, with a, within a grotesque fantasy world that satisfies both casual players uh, uh, and those looking your to challenge themselves. So it probably has a lot of uh, hidden stuff, uh, Metroidvania style. The, the thing that I noticed was uh, he's got his little doodle out. <laughs> yeah, I, I, wanted be, I wanted to be charitable. I wanted to be like, no, it's, it's like an Audi belly button or some shit. No, it's like, no, no. no. It's the, the, there's a mature content warning at the bottom of the Steam page that reads main character uh, have no pants and simplified depiction of his private parts is visible. Hey, there's a demo. You can go check it out for yourself. You'd be like, wait a minute. <laughs> It is very much aping that like Domix odd ones out like YouTube cartoon style from like yeah the, the, five, I had five to look at it. I was like five... did Noodle do the character design? No, no, it's just uh, generic it's also, character. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As long as you got a <laughs> sandy bridge, doodle. four gigajoules of RAM, and five <laughs> gigs of space, man, go check it out. There's a demo. Download it. Play around. Uh, yeah, requires four, the third party. Four gigs of first <laughs> Big butt Bobby is sporting its own. What the hell? What is it? Let's let's read through it. Right, I'm trying to get to <laughs> it. We we own all your soul. Uh it's just like a generic one. Streaming nonprofit, non-profit fan works. GDPR, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. uh, okay. fan fiction based on a uh, disclaimer warrant. I don't know. I don't okay. know. GDPR. In- interesting. We 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 will sell your data. We <laughs> we will sell it to a creepy little man with no pants. <laughs> so exciting it's a thing uh let's just move on from that uh what do we got up next oh you gotta yeah. run it on gnome or you're gonna die how about in i just realized that there's a portal in the logo between the two ah S's. ah so maybe they that was intentional it was may, um may, mayhaps unforgiving and mind-bending precision platformer everything pedro hates in a game but I, on the other hand, love one? me some precision <laughs> really? platforming. And this one has, I think, a level rotate feature mechanic. And I was like, wait about it. That's a little different in this type of game. You know, you think like Celeste with your character jumping around. Now imagine if the entire level rotated around Celeste and it changed things up. Now throw in and probably why there's a uh, portal in there. It maintains your momentum. Oh, it's like portal without portals, but it does the portal thing. Where you jump and you spin instead of going up, you'll be going down. Yeah, no, fuck that. I'm not playing this game. <laughs> fuck, come on, man. Like, <laughs> yeah, super meat portal. And yet it moves. Celeste. Meet Celeste, meets portal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, this, this is a smorgasbord of like rage quit. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, fuck that. Fuck that shit. Yeah. Throwing some VVVVV and some meat boy in there. Yeah. yeah. No, no. Screw that yep. shit. Dude, uh, 9 dollars I might actually just pick this up, man. Uh, 
Der eine war. Ja. Yeah. I'm done. I, I, I scrolled down down to the system requirements and under Linux, there's a bit of a there's Isn't a bit there? of a diatribe yep. in uh in involving involving running this only on GNOME with X. Only use it. <laughs> Where is it? Oh yeah, right. GNOME yeah. desktop environment. Mm. Oh, they do say other uh, configuration and user environment as provided by default with the support supported. of distribution, kernel, buzzer, etc. So I guess they're covering their butts on the Steam Deck. Hey, look, because that's it, uh, for free. You're very happy. Game scope, which is mm. way <laughs> purchase type. Uh, Steam purchases forty. All right. Intriguing uh, visuals stay for the challenging gameplay. Frustrating Portal mechanics. All right. Yeah, I mean, it looks like it's like a a fuck you hard light. Yeah, no, I I, I can absolutely see the precision Meat platform bits. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, has, has a grappling hook. hook. All right, good game. Nine ninety nine. I'm struggling. Good. We'll talk about the latest tumble bundle a bit later in the show, but like stuff like this is what I'm looking for. Like something I'd pick up, fuck around with five ten minutes, save, come back to it a bit later. Ah. Uh, that's not the only game update we got. I was waiting. We got no, we, 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 they got us a we got video two. for this. Oh, we didn't get a video. We can just splice in sexual there's harassment. There's a gift. Though. Yeah, <laughs> there's a gift. <laughs> the game from the creators that are like, "Hey, this is our last update." For real, you guys. Like totally yeah, for real. Yeah, it was the last update in 2019. Uh, no, 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 no. It was 2021, I think. We we uh, did we did cover it. They're like, yeah, no, we're we're pushing out these new levels, done. and that's it. That's it. Yeah, and we're talking about Ultimate Chicken Horse, and they're like, we had a good run. <laughs> like the game is baked. We're going to move on to different projects. This is like a fourth update after that, which I respect. You know, I'm not giving you a hard time. Uh, this is another content drop, and we get a panda, mm-hmm. a panda, two new outfits, two new levels, and uh, four skins. <laughs> Mm. If you say so, four skins. It says four skins right there. <laughs> yeah, four, four of them. Four skins. Mm-hmm. Brown bear, polar bear, black bear, and blue bear. Yeah, that's four skins, Pedro. What the fuck are you talking about, man? Weirdo. Yeah, two two new levels, two new outfits, <laughs> and some new tracks. And yeah, See, you got this creepy I mean, little that, panda. That, that's one of the pandas. You have a uh, four skins. panda. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's 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 one of the skins. That's one of the four skins. Yeah, of the five dudes. <laughs> Look, there's a yeah four skins. Like there's four different four skins. <laughs> Show title. <laughs> Four different foreskins. <laughs> look, look, with with our special guest star Piper Perry. Uh, oh, dude, <laughs> look at the, look at this bullshit mechanic. Toxic. Yeah, the, the, uh, the one of the new levels has like uh, this this uh, toxic sludge thing. It's like a yeah, toxic tower is the is the new one. Um, yeah, no, they they, they keep, I have that's to a imagine, bit of a is, swing, isn't it? Like Viking Postman. A Viking Postman. Yeah, I'd pl- you know what? I played that game. Uh, I I don't know. Like I I'd imagine, is this just like one person on the team who's like, I can't I can't get this out of my head. I got some new ideas, or I, I don't I don't know. So someone got the itch. I mean, we're still getting like fixes, man. Like Twitch chat and all this. Uh, do, do you think maybe this one never absolutely blew the hell up? It, it got it, a little bit of traction back in the day. Well, back back during the initial Kickstarter, but yeah, like, um, and th- this seems like something that would like be great for streamers because, like, yeah, you just keep going and do you see and something like this, you know, it's sold okay. Right? How, how many? Uh, what's what's user reviews look like on this? Uh, just to get an idea, just to take that look. A thirty thousand overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly positive. positive. Oh, they, yeah. they've done all right. They sold a couple of copies. Now I, I understand that's fucking rookie numbers in the grand scheme of things, but. Do you think, like, you know, we're done, we need to move on. Then a game like Lethal Company comes on out of nowhere and just starts printing the fuck out of some money, and you're like, maybe we just need to keep this one a little relevant just in fucking case, man. Just, just make sure we're still out there and we're alive. We don't want to abandon it. I, that there's something to be said about not getting that bad press, but the, like, the initial, it, it was never that big. Yes, uh, there were a bunch of YouTubers, and I remember watching Dodger, and because um, they did the co-optional, uh, it wasn't the podcast, it was like a an event where they had a bunch of people all in a studio sure, together. Sure, and then they, 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 people, people were playing it, but like... Yeah, and, and yeah, the, but it was never like massively huge, so 
I, I'm, I'm actually impressed that they got 30,000 reviews. So very good. <laughs> I've seen it's big enough to where I've seen random streamers fucking play it. Like it's like their D list. Like, Hey, we're looking for something to play. I'm all out of ideas. Let's go play this. So, uh, Hey, thanks for keeping it updating. Add eight players. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There, there's more, your more chaos. Yeah. yeah you want it. <laughs> Let to, us unlock characters without having to play the game by ourselves. <laughs> Geofence that feature for everybody. Uh, let us do it. Just lock out Cambridge. I give you the IP address block. Yeah. Just, right. just not Pedro. Just not Pedro. <laughs> do, do a check on the Steam username. All right, we got we got to talk about big big domes. I like big domes, dude. I I think we all like surprisingly because like we were sitting there like uh, another park so going like shit that wasn't fun. Yeah, I know. And then then you get into it and you're like, oh man, there's a timer. Oh god, I'm oh, moving so slow. I gotta like, 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 yeah, yeah, install yeah, this fucking yeah. game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and and, and, th- and th- then it then it clicks with you. Yeah, Dome Keeper was definitely one of those ones that's like, yeah, you you wouldn't think it w- it is as fun as it is. Uh but they these guys uh they they pulled it out and they got a big old chonky update as well. Uh they're moving from Godot 3 to Godot 4, so that brings a bunch of fixes and stability and new instability to the thing as what happens when you uh when you switch engines, they add they fixed up a couple of the dome types. Now that they have a bunch of player data, they learned that the Tesla dome was maybe a little too powerful, so they nerfed that. Uh, they added a couple new gadgets, some friends that can help you carry items and help you fight as well. Uh, they added some new upgrades uh, as well as as well as um, revamping and adding some new stuff to the ex- existing uh, tech trees. And yeah, this. They, they, they're 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 keeping on pushing out the updates they added guild assignments which are like challenge modes they'll give you like specific restrictions of how you can play the game they, there was always the ability to do like custom modes for this but this is like hey we have some big pre big challenges for you so that's kind of neat um yeah big update. yeah they, they they they've introduced new monsters and one of them is the uh, tormentor they have the gif of like the monster like attacking the dome, and I'm looking at that animation when he starts like putting out the stream. It's desperate for a piss, and it's like, going, oh. yeah, that's, that, that, that's, that's, the that's, that's me when I wake up in the morning. Yeah, just no, nah, dude, I'm just hearing like special beam. <laughs> that's yeah, that's me in the morning when I when I pee, I go into the toilet and I scream at the top of my lungs. <laughs> Wakes everyone up if they're if they're not up by then, they are now. I'm glad that uh, this has uh, gotten like modest success because it's a really fun mechanic. Uh, it really plays it, it got on a bunch of awards too. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It hits you I, right. I, in, it hits you right in the greeds. Yes, because uh, yeah. yeah, you're trying to get up and you try to you try to get too much shit. You know, you're the chipmunk with so many uh, foreskins in its mouth, and <laughs> you don't have enough speed to get up to protect your dome. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah you genuinely you, 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 you hear the damage and you're like, oh fuck, I'm gonna have to repair that. <laughs> That's, That's rough. I, I yeah, genuinely with my precious upgrades. Thought, like the limited time of going down and then having to come back up, it was just going to be annoying. But it works. It works. It, yeah, works. it, 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 it is a very good push your luck style of game. You're yeah. like, can I can I get a little bit more? A right. little bit. It's base building building for just like evil people, man. The mechanic is just dark. Uh all right, that's going to do it for the main stuff. Let's go ahead and jump into the news. It's been a while since we've talked about our old friend Humble and the bundles, but there's a Metroidvania Mania game bundle out in YouTube. Metroidvania? Hey, it's got two Linux titles in it. Uh, there's a link with a referral code if you want to give us a couple of pennies. It's got two Linux titles, native Linux titles in it, uh, that being Axiom Verge and Axiom Verge 2, which is not Axiom Verge 1, <laughs> by the way upset about that but you get nine years of shadow cookie cutter ghost song death gambit the night's watch and again axiom verge one and axiom verge two oh you get all that for 14 bucks which isn't bad at all i had a good time Uh, i went through the list and played what i wanted to play give it a look um you know axiom verge one is great they made a sequel uh and nine years of shadow was pretty good I like that. Strider's a big fan of that. You know that uh, nutter who does the Lutris thing. He's like, that's so great. I'm like, I, I see where it's going with that. The one that caught me off guard was Cookie Cutter. Have, have you ever heard of Cookie Cutter? I have not. No. No? No. <laughs> no. I'm like, what? what's a Cookie Cutter? Is there a link to the Steam store page here? Play on Windows. How do I get to it? Do I just go to Cookie Cutter on Steam? 
Yeah, yeah I, I think you're so. just going to have to look that up. <laughs> this, I mean, it got me because I had a cyborg with the uh, spade tattoo flipping me off. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> this, this is fucking metal, dude. Like, it is, uh, it's de- yeah. <laughs> okay, you got a yeah. motorcycle, you got a ray gun. Doom beams, uh, different mechanics. Yeah. You- <laughs> Yeah. Choke that worm fucker. Yeah. Okay. 100%. Never heard of it. Apparently nobody else has either. This came out last year. Uh, well, yeah. 2023 right at the end of it. It's only got like 427 uh, positive reviews. Good time with it. Uh, can't recommend this one enough. Now it could turn into absolute shit later on. I only got like maybe two hours into it, but not like what if you're somebody likes a Metroidvania has got to hit you quick for me. There's no, like, the third episode bullshit with Metroidvanias. <laughs> and I'm like, no, give it an hour. I'm like, no. And um, this one just, like, hit me right off the get. Good opening, strong opening. Emphasis on combat, you know? Good thing with juggling. Really happy. I liked it. Now, if you want to go check that out, like, 14 bucks, And there's, like, a $1 option to get you at least, like, Axiom Verge 1. If you haven't played that, do yourself a favor. I had no, that's another hipster pixel game that I had no expectations for. And just got sucked into that. I didn't do anything but play Axiom Verge for two days straight until I beat the damn thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, Humble Metro Bundle. Go try it out. And Pedro, I, I looked at Death's Gambit, and I'm like, that looks like a Pedro game. And I played it, and I'm like, this feels like a Pedro game. I there have Death's Gambit. I just haven't played it yet. All right. <laughs> That's the one game of that bundle that I already have. Okay. But yeah, it is, it is uh, very much, uh, the combat's a lot more fluid. <laughs> it is active ish ish i was like I, I was feeling like this is slow enough for pedro <laughs> yeah no it's not fast it's just very active you have it's to be beautiful. on the ball <laughs> it's gorgeous pixel art to like look at because the only reason i looked at it because I, I said i was going to try all of them and uh very symphony of the night ish mm-hmm. as far as um stuff put together also thank you for the pledge of one dollar in. Thank you very much, Zen. <laughs> Yay. All right. Hey, yo. Let's talk about some good news that involves Nintendo. Why? Hey, because listen. it doesn't involve Nintendo. Yes. <laughs> Zelda 64 recompiled. Ooh. Yes. Why are we talking about that? You know, I've heard about it. version one point. It's, oh, is out, bitches. It's ready to get masked. This is a static recompilation of Majora's Mask. It's a native port. Runs on Linux. You can download the binary. That is awesome. New features. You got widescreen, you got gyro aim, autosave, Steam Deck support. Pretty dope. And don't worry. Don't worry. The better Zelda game is in the works. So you can play that while you're waiting on the good Zelda game. Download is available right on the GitHub page. Now, I wasn't even a fan of um, Majora's Mask. I played around with it for a little bit on the N64. In, well, yeah, hardware, official hardware. Yes. Nintendo, stay away. <laughs> and uh, I'm like, yeah, not really my thing. And I'm, I might go back and try this because I always like when they redo this high frame rates. You know, you can do 60, 120, and all that, and you get the widescreen. And they were very careful. Like, we maintained all of the effects, so don't worry about that. Oh, but you do need the original game assets. So you're going to have to go to Nintendo.com, go to the shop, log in with your Nintendo account, and download the officially licensed N64 Majora's Mask ROM for $9.99. Yes. Wouldn't it be fucking console. amazing if that existed? Yeah, that would be awesome. That'd be awesome. Do they, do, do, do they not have Majora's Mask on Virtual Console? Absolutely. I'm sure. If, well, pff, dude, I don't know. I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> not that you would play on the Switch. I mean, the, 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 the Switch, but I, I think yeah. it was available on the Wii U. Dude, <laughs> here's the thing. Like, I'm not just saying this. I, I have a perfect like, bit of proof. Go look at my GOG.com account. I do that regularly. Like, oh, look, open source re-implementation of engine. Do I have this game? You know what? I'm old. The older you get, you tend to have more money than time. Oh, yeah. I'm like, I need the assets. Am I going over to Pirate Proxy or where the fuck it is? This thing? No, I, I'm going to type in that followed by GOG. And I'm like, it's going to be like a buck ninety nine, three ninety nine, maybe nine ninety nine. And you know what? Yeah, I got six of these fucking CDs of this fucking game. <laughs> fuck it. I'm just going to buy it, download yeah, not, it. Not- not extract Nintendo, it, though. plug it into the game engine, play it for 10 minutes, never touch it again. So, there's money, but Nintendo don't care. They don't have well, to care, and that's what's driving me up the wall. Nintendo can sit there and like, fuck you, we have so much money, we, we don't need to do any of this, and like, it would be so great 
because I'd pay 10 bucks for an N64 ROM that I knew was always going to be there, that I could just go download it whenever I needed it. That was always going to be there, yes, which has never been the case with Nintendo. Nintendo <laughs> Switch Online, you gotta, you gotta buy the special Bluetooth-only control that only works with your Nintendo Switch Online service and Linux now because we have kernel drivers for it. Coming you, soon. Nintendo. Uh, the Switch yeah. Cloud, yeah. Well, no, it's it's already here. Like that's that's uh, that's the Nintendo Switch Online stuff. Lets you play like the older older games. What would be your price? I'm like, I'd pay ten bucks for in sixty four ROMs. I'd pay a buck ninety nine for. Uh, uh, yeah, I would just to just for, for 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 the for the game show. Like, I think ten bucks is sort of like the floor of like ten bucks for in sixty four. What would you? How much is the GameCube game, uh, Pedro, in our this alternate <laughs> universe? Still ten bucks. A GameCube game as I think the ten dollars is still fair. Uh, it 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 would be a hard push. It would have to be something really good. To would, would, maybe Mario would, Kart would be fifteen. Would so okay. What 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 about for like a, like a Super Nintendo game? Like five bucks. I would I would I wouldn't pay I wouldn't pay ten bucks for a Super Nintendo ROM. I'd pay five SNES is no. Like Ven was saying, like Nintendo ROMs gonna be ninety nine cents in. <laughs> and uh, hey, thanks for the cap. Well, thank you five. very much, oh. <laughs> person who bought uh, you delicious stranger. <laughs> Oh, it was Scott. Canadian. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> you too think Scott, you're the then, only Canadian. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, call don't, each don't other you up and you're Maddie. like, hey, man, isn't it awesome yeah, being the Maddie. only? <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's an Agent Smith situation, right? Like, there are two Canadian. There are two types of Canadians. There are Jordans and there are Scots. Oh, that's and it. And that's it. And that's it. Yeah. And every 11 years, they go to war with each other. It's awesome. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> that's where the French come from. Yes, and 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 we called that movie Battlefield Four. <laughs> there's our, there's our transition. Let's talk about Warsaw. Not 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 that Warsaw, Boink. the one in Poland. Um, this is this is the open source server for Battlefield Four because EA loves to kill their online multiplayer stuff, and some players take exception to that. So they have gone and written a new server in um. I believe it is in Rust. I just like to take um, a moment to say, get absolutely <laughs> right, Reddit. Oh, yeah. Zooming in, <laughs> make make the make the make the close button bigger. Um, yeah, but uh, so battle Battlefield Four. It was. I um, swear to God, this is backwards. <laughs> what is happening? Where uh, where if, am I? If you try to zoom in, it, it gets smaller. Like that's wow. All right, never I, mind. I, I've I've been transported into <laughs> into opposite land. I feel I feel really really violated. Anyways, yeah. So. Uh, Open source Battlefield 4 server. Uh, you can host it yourself. It runs in Windows in a Docker container. They have a Linux version of the server as well, and uh, they are actually testing it on Linux as well. Through Wine, no Linux native version because there was no Linux native version Ooh. of Battlefield 4. <laughs> but hey, at least they're QAing the shit. At least they confirmed that right. hey, you can actually connect to our custom server from a uh, client running in Wine or Proton. Which is, it's good. It means that they're actually treating Linux users seriously as like a, as like an actual serious, um, uh, pop, uh population segment of their community. Well, they, and, you, they had to have the guys like people were going to run servers. Can you imagine yeah. like having a 24 seven online, uh, web basing windows, windows, windows server? Yeah. Uh, uh-uh. yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. No, that, 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 <laughs> because you want your, not. uh, power bill to triple that month. <laughs> I, man, I, I, can't I, even I just imagine. want my server to be controlled by random people on that the internet. So I'm just going to expose my windows server to the internet. <sighs> yeah, no, I, I saw the, it will be playable on Linux at launch. I looked at the screenshots, like the top, right. Rust backtrace equals full wine 64. Uh, don't get my hopes up like that. <laughs> I mean, it's Rust. It's Linux safe. Yeah, memory yeah, safe. No, it, it was like the, the wine 64 bit that was the relevant bit. It's like, uh, I thought maybe someone could have cracked the Frostbite engine. And uh, see that at that that would be like much bigger news, right? That would have right. been yeah. like, hey guys, <laughs> we can like we could just have this entire shit reverse engineered, start making games. This is the reality we're going to end up with. Like, if you don't release dedicated servers in your code after that, uh, don't worry. We'll do it for you. Um, there's enough, apparently enough of an interest in like Battlefield 4. That was like their game. You know, they want they want that nostalgia feels and good. And as far as like fully reverse engineering, they, they do have some mentions. They're like, the anti-cheat. We're going to try to improve that. I could also see that discussion going, let's leave as much of that intact as we can because we don't want to have to deal with like the anti-cheat for our anti-cheat. Mm. Right, because right. nobody's and, gonna and, fucking play it if it's just 
mm-hmm. bought it. Just all, all, all hackers all the time. Yeah. Right. That, 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 that is one of the, that is one of the, the gotchas of any sort of like online shooter or any online game community, right? Like, I only cheat offline. Competitive. Yeah. I cheat by mail. <laughs> I cheat offline. I, I cheat in my play by <laughs> email civilization games. Game and I want to cheat. I'm going to cheat. I know. Uh, what was it? Uh, when it what, the first time I really used Steam was when I used uh, Skyrim. Played Skyrim mm-hmm. for the first time, and uh, I remember enabling cheats. And they were like, "Oh, you don't get achievements." I'm like, "Fucking end." <laughs> this uh, there's no there's no real downside, is there? No, no I am not like. Why would you inform me of that? I don't care. Some people care. A lot of people care. There's games dedicated to people who care about the amount of achievements they there, have on there, their yeah. the, the main reason anyone plays the Avatar, the last Airbender game on Xbox 360, is because it is so easy to platinum that game, and people who want to have high game scores seek this game out just so they can cruise through it, just to artificially inflate their numbers. Hey, uh, Soma. Soma was very easy to also platinum because you just had to play through <laughs> When you take it a break, you know, you, you're hitting pause, you know, you signed into the PSN network to make sure you get your trophies and achievements and you're watching an ad because, well, you hit, you know, your level's loading, Jordan. Yeah, it's the future of gaming. This is an article <laughs> from Tom's Hardware. And well, welcome to the back half of the podcast where this this is what we're talking about. Right. Um, links to all this stuff in our show notes. Advertising has an opportunity to be a meaningful driver of growth for us, says Android Wilson. Uh, you know, I, I'll, I'll steal I'll steal that from Sterling. I think that's yes, a good, that's absolutely. a solid burn. Uh, I, listen, I'm not original. I, I I just steal from funnier people than me. I'm my name is Carlos Mencia. Uh, no, but uh, we uh, we're we're we're, ta- we're talking about ads in games. Um, and uh, there's been there's been a push for increased monetization in games going forward. We talked about that report a while ago that was talking about how what like over over 40 percent of um game revenue is coming from premium purchases um uh, and a, a not insignificant ex- significant amount of that is also coming from microtransactions and you know see these guys are thinking how can we get more blood out of the stone why don't we why don't we serve ads in games this is an opportunity for us to open up entirely new revenue screen streams and like th- this is uh, one one of the first things that's happening. Roku is filing for a patent that allows you them to inject ads over HDMI if they detect that mm-hmm. your image is paused. Um, and they're like, and the the article brings up, you know, some people don't want ads in their games. Some people are okay with it as long as it is non intrusive. The issue I have with non intrusive is that. That can literally mean any moment that you are not actively playing the game, there is an ad being beamed at your fucking face. And, you know, you pause that game because you just got through a, ba- a really hard boss fight. You're mentally exhausted. And fucking the EA, EA Sports is like, eat more McDonald's. And it's you're like, game. yes, but I do want McDonald's. And I'm not even yeah. torn by this. Like, first thing I wrote, dude, was like, I draw a fucking hard line on, like, AAA titles and shit. Like, basically games and period. And if you're going to, like, show me an ad, and, like, just a straight up damn ad, like, I'm not buying your game. I'm just not. I, I can live without it. But EA's, like, talking about, like, oh, we'll make them dynamic and they'll change. I'm like, well, at least we'll be able to block them if you want to play them, you know, once you get the EA title on GOG or wherever. But how about this? This is something I want. Uh, what are your thoughts on? We're not the target here because our generations, gen- I'm going to say in general, we're not going to put up with this shit. Like, we're just like, no, nah, not dealing with it. We've got an entire generation that's grown up on mobile gaming. That is yeah. nothing but ads. Let's think about even if it's like self ads, we're, we're drilled down to it. We go play um, Stubble Buddies. Mm-hmm. Like, it is nothing but the funnel, like 90% of the fucking 95% of the menu, 96, nine, let's say what it is, 97% <laughs> of that menu is designed to get you in the like story. Oh, it, it, play, but, oh, there it is. <laughs> it, it's, it's a Skinner box. There's so many, like, explosions and, like, jingles and shit whenever you press anything. and like, which, which is a damn shame because it's genuinely a good game. Um, but I, they, they found the formula that works for them. With that generation coming up, you know, you're playing more like you're dodging ads and all that. Like, that's just part of the game to some people now. Yeah. Upcoming, like that's just how the games are made. Every game and I've ever are, played's been like that. Yeah, there are some mobile games that do okay. If you watch an ad, we'll give you some of the premium currency for free. Hmm? Which fair enough. The, some if, games just uh, have an ad at the bottom of. Them. <laughs> yeah, like there's always an ad at the yeah. bottom there. A tappy chicken. Uh, the, <laughs> uh, but yeah, no the the way that they're describing it, it's not even non intrusive is they're being thoughtful 
about how they're introducing ads into games that have recently had their base price increased to $70. That, yeah, they're, they're putting thought into how they can uh, make games. <laughs> Someone actually made a that yeah, yeah, I didn't know. <laughs> I, see, I was rolling the dice on this. I'm like, are is Pedro about to say, yeah, that's what I'm talking about? Or <laughs> oh, it's, 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 it's the made up one. We live in this weird reality the where jokes can become for... real very quickly. <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> I can't remember what the original name for the the, the Tappy Chicken game was. But Fla- Flappy, Flappy, Flappy Bird. Flappy Bird. Flappy Bird I'm it. assuming tap, Tappy Chicken is, uh, yeah. yeah. Tappy, Tappy, Tappy Chicken Tappy was like Chicken. the Unreal Engine demo <laughs> that they shipped. They're like, here's how you make a game with this. Here's, yeah, and you shit out an egg. But yeah, no, uh, th- this is EA. They are... Uh, Probably going to do uh, something similar to what Ubisoft was shown as doing in the uh, Assassin's Creed, which is you pause the game and add. Uh, Dude, but, I already, but, but I already get, your TV takes over get fucking and shows mad you other ads. And U- then <laughs> Ubisoft does that shit where they're trying to sell you shit and um, Assassin's Creed when you pause and they're like, hey, yep. go to the store and cheat. Yep. yep. Yeah. It's, it's, not, it's I, not cheating. It's in-game premium purchases. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't bought an EA game. The last EA game I bought was uh, Dragon Age Origins in 2009. And something tells me I'm going to keep not buying any. Cause I bought the Star Wars game. Or somebody gave me the Star Wars game. I, I enjoyed it for what it was. Uh, EA, EA's going to do some EA Thank shit. Thank you, person who gifted me the Star Wars game. I think it was Bye. Arthur. <laughs> I mean, it does depend on the game, though. Because to come around to like Star Wars is, do I want Space Pepsi showing up in my Star Wars game? Get fuck, you know, we're not just gonna have like a Pepsi ad on the fucking, you know, uh, but but then there's the uh, there's the flip side, and the article brings this up as well. And we talked about it the the your the American truck simulator ads, yeah, yeah. We're like, hey, do you want a job actually driving a truck? Go go apply, and like, yeah, and like, to, and we're all and, cool yeah. with that, yeah, even that though the mechanic sense. is in there. And but <laughs> given the timeline, it is just a matter of time before that is abused. Oh, absolutely. Well, and, and and the question is, like, how will it be abused? And I think there's going to be, like, a lot of new and interesting Gently. technology Gently. that... Um, <laughs> no, it's not. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's going to be a lot of new, interesting technology and techniques that come out of this to try and, like, maximize your, your ad penetration and whatnot. I'm curious, like, what, what sort of, like, the long-term trends of this are going to be, like, in games. Are we going to start having, because I, I, I think of 30 Rock, where they're just like, yeah, we need to have product placement. So we're just going to like very, very blatantly lean into the fact that this is a Snapple commercial in the middle of our show for I about mean, five seconds. It's like, I mean, boy, uh, drink your ice cold Mountain Dew and follow me to fight A movie that gods. both of us yeah. enjoy uh, with blatant product placement throughout the entire film, Little Nicky. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So like, <laughs> you can do it in a smart and funny way. Um... Or are are we going to start like seeing what's happening in YouTube, where like we will like um, advertisers only want to sell advertisements in games that are advertiser friendly, and so all of a sudden the types of games that are being made are being restricted to those that are more advertiser friendly. That that that's that's a weird corporate health. Depending that on I don't how it fucking plays yeah. out, because like even to the truck simulator thing, like yeah, if I'm driving around, you know, GTA 11 or whenever that comes out, yeah, you want that realism, you know, you want like billboards and shit that you would normally so, see. GTA is a really weird uh, is a really weird situation. I want to be able to go to McDonald's and but the ads in order GTA a salad are jokes. Like weirdo. They're like making fun of the actual ads in real life, though. So I feel like that would be dissonance. That, that would be kind of dissonant, right? Like, or it, that would it would basically just be. I mean, I, listen, I'm not going to be the one to accuse GTA of selling out. If you out. want the GTA's joke, if you want the out. joke ads back, buy the ad free pass. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Of and course, you can have your jokes back. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's it's the season pass. It's the season pass that gets rid of all. Everything's the ads. going back to like cable. We were talking about that in the pre pre super shows, and like you know, when cable and even satellite TV when it first launched, it was ad free. They're like, hey, this is what you're paying. Prime Video. This is what you're paying the fucking premium for. No ads, and then ads are you. We, that sounds like a foreign concept. We're talking forty fucking years ago. Like more like uh, thirty something with Direct TV. Direct TV was like you just bought it and you were good, and now you just accept it. YouTube. YouTube didn't have ads. Now, and then what Jordan said, I'm paying for, I know I got Amazon Prime to have Amazon Prime. The video thing came much later. And I'm like, oh, that's neat. But now we got to deal with ads unless you want to get more money. Get fucked. I'm not. Um, but here's the, what I think ne- we're going to ne- see. Netflix already has that tier as well. Yeah. Uh, with this, like with everything else, uh, there, there's going to be patches where you're going you're gonna to have to download 
an unofficial whatever to remove the ads. And uh, that's going to be another part of a, a very annoying life to lead. Except now these games are going to be always online with the kernel level anti cheat that if you start running software that disables the ads, will just disable your account. That's the big one because you used to have clever games that you could have a team of people organically integrating the ads into the game and making it a part of the thing and non-intrusive and actually look like they fit into the content that they're being delivered through. But this is the same uh, AAA industry, this is the same Electronic Arts that uh, decides to just kill games and kill studios for no fucking reason. They release games in broken ass states. They charge are we, are we seventy dollars for a game that is now more incomplete than it would have been back in the day. Oh, uh, it's category of like releases busted games. Period. But it, that's the thing that that is the industry that they want to slam more hostile. That's the AAA that's, industry. EA doesn't get any special like. Hugs yeah, for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let, 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 let's 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 talk about Microsoft and uh, what what they did. Yeah, this week. no, yeah. this is an no. industry thing. This, okay, these are seriously. the companies that are releasing broken ass software with intrusive end user license agreements and bring zero uh, spyware effectively. Yeah. What about uh, uh, what was it? Bomb rush. Uh, so, uh, 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 fuck. Uh, Hi-Fi Rush. Hi-Fi Rush. Hi-Fi that one, Rush. That, that entire team got nixed by Microsoft earlier this week. Yeah, no, they're work- like, we want more games like Hi-Fi Rush, but not, but not these ones. Well, yeah, what they meant to, like, I think it was like comma that also sell well. <laughs> it sold pretty well though. No, well, Hi-Fi enough, Rush apparently. sold reasonably well. It didn't why did sell it sell as well? Because it Bethesda was on Game Pass. <laughs> That's why I've already looked it up. Spoilers. <laughs> Um, yeah, that 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 is a victim of the Bethesda Unreal expectations that uh, has been mounting for a while, and uh, probably the reason that uh, also it was well, a stealth launch. Yeah, they they kind of just dropped it, uh, but yeah, that's the thing. They dropped it, but everyone kind of picked up on it because hey, there's a new game published by Bethesda that uh, we didn't know was coming. So, uh. yeah. but yeah. When um, Starfield kind of didn't deliver on the amount of sales that they were probably expecting, Microsoft came to collect and Bethesda went, uh, we'll just but, fire but, them and give you that yeah, money. But, but, and again, like who, whose fault is that? If you don't, if you don't actively promote your game that you're publishing and you, you, you put it in a store that does not actually have direct sales and then you wonder, why didn't I make my money back? Who made who made those Microsoft's just looking at looking at fucking yeah. numbers, dude. And like, and then again, yeah. Microsoft's so fucking big. Yeah, like that disconnect of like somebody going, "We need more games like this." You mean the one you just go? We canceled that one. All right, all right. Huh. The, the, yeah, the one from the studio <laughs> we just axed. Yeah. All right. I well, mean, yeah, may, maybe they just need to stop buying studios. They clearly can't manage them all. No, dude. All you need to you just need to buy them, and the money machine go burr. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. We we just buy them, and then. We, we created jobs by letting all these people go. So now they have new positions <laughs> that they can go apply to. Let us know what you think. What is the solution to this? Uh, I Steam needs to have clear labeling on any game that does. Like, I think that should be on like Euro Truck Simulator, too. Like yeah, the, uh, the end user ads, license yeah. agreement bit on the side that right. has like the yellow thing saying this game has a third party Yule it, that has, you uh, it has the old uh, banner this from game punch has the monkey ads. <laughs> punch the monkey banner that like jumps around <laughs> look at the monkey look at the silly monkey yeah. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen that's going to wrap us up for tonight thanks for joining in if you want to help us out we got a little bit of hate mail coming up but first uh, head over to the support tab or you can buy that humble bundle like uh, whoever allegedly Scott, did Scott probably uh, did yep. <laughs> welcome to our latest patron Zen and uh yeah linuxteamcast.com we got patrons speak to that leaper pay paypal bitcoin we got amazon wishlist jordan jill pedro and i got one for the studio we got a merch store you see that hellhawk sticker no you never knew because you don't watch us live it's hanging out right there at twitch.tv forward slash linux schemecast and of course an amazon storefront for everything in the studio if you want to take a peek with it and again the humble affiliate your support makes show possible each one of you helping us out thank you very much Take advantage of your benefits. A uh, bunch of stuff with Patreon. If you could back us that way, access to our Discord, access to our sto- uh, store notes. Yes, our store notes 
which are quite yeah. brilliant, immaculate store notes. Uh, might even call them show notes. I mean, you can watch that <laughs> if you want to creep and see how it's getting made each and every week, you know, when Friday rolls around, I'm like, fuck. And they just kind of magically appear. It is quite brilliant. And uh, you can come hang out with us. We do appreciate it. Stick around for your names in the credits. But we have a contact button while you're over at Linux Gamecast. If you press that, you can fill that out and be like, hey, man, I take issue or I really agree with Pedro this week. Oh, and only this. Pedro on every single thing on all topics. <laughs> What's your problem? Seriously, mm, what is your damage polish. if that's the case? <laughs> fill that out. Send that. We get an email and uh, we might read it on this show. Same goes for patron comments and, uh, of course, on YouTube. Up first is, uh, we talked about the hell diving last week, yeah. and fucking all, we did it, Reddit. Yeah, the, the, the internet finally accomplished something. This is from ISO 666, and they say, uh, the hell divers is worse. 71 countries basically get banned for not being in a Sony-allowed country. E and some people on forums are just like, who fucking cares if Ukraine can't play? F them. F Africa, etc. So even if you just bought the game, you get banned because Sony has laws not every country agrees with. Um, uh, some kids just say, use a damn VPN, stop crying, but that would get your VSM and Valve banned as it's against both their terms of service, which is true. That's, um, people were saying, well, why not use a VPN? It's because you can't, you're not allowed to. Pedro, what happened with Helldivers last week? Helldivers, uh, well, the development team was very quick to put, uh, Sony under the uh, proverbial bus because they required these or they put out the announcement that the requirement for a PSN store account was going to be enforced come the end of May, which uh, they said that it wasn't originally because there were some technical difficulties. It's called money. Money is a big technical difficulty. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, they, uh, they, they weren't enforcing it. They, they said it was a grace period and, uh, that grace period m saw the game becoming very popular. And, uh, when they said, uh, well, we want that popularity to reflect on the Sony numbers and people said, nah, fuck you. And the game went from overwhelmingly positive reviews to mixed. Wow. Like 50% <laughs> positive and negative. Quite the nosedive now to. If you already bought the game and you're in one of these countries, you can still play it, but you can't buy a copy for your friend, which that definitely sucks. Jordan, why do you think the uh, like real reason is that they had to click this on? Because I talked to somebody who had a pretty interesting insight because uh, they make video games for a living. So I think I think like the part part of this is was just like, you know, they, we, we, we had known that they this was originally part of the Helldivers deal. They had took Sony's money. Uh, and part of this was the original stipulation. And, you know, they, they were happy to have it broken and not have this requirement in place for a while. And, you know, may, maybe it's one of those things where, like, you're a small, hungry company. You sign a contract with a non-favorable clause. And then you're, then you realize, hey, we have a lot of uh, we have a lot of fans. Maybe we can apply pressure that way. But um, I don't know. I think long term, do you th I, I think. This may this may undermine a lot of the the trust that people have with like the hell divers developers because it's like oh well you know this the situation isn't entirely under your control even with your best intentions you cannot you do not necessarily have final say on things like this so what what does this mean for us the um we all we always go to the like what's the nefarious part of it because usually that's the correct way to look at something you know follow the money right. who, who key bono who profits now this was explained to me uh, it caught me out of left field and I had, I had to have it like broken down to me why would they have to do this gdpr mm. once you get over a certain amount of player base that shit kicks in for real son and guess who because you got to do data retention and all that and sit per country per state here in the states and all this different shit guess what system already had all of that bullshit built in? PSN network. Oh, mm. there's some poor bastard for Helldivers who's going to spend the next six months writing that shit. To get nice they can and go to Sony and say, uh, look, the PSN account, it didn't work out. Do you want to? <laughs> well, uh, Sony's like, all right, you don't have to link that shit, uh, but you guys got to implement uh, this because uh, we're not getting sued over this bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, so some 
somebody's going to be busy making roll roll in the that is definitely an interesting angle and i i gotta wonder like do we need to start um or i guess do developers need to start like creating these sort of um frameworks in place to like be able to make gdpr compliant games just from genesis right like right if you, if or you, like if, have if, that if, available like you know the equivalent of like that in the store right like or, or like some some sort of library that says like here's the gdpr compliant like implementation of multiplayer or something that like is generic that people can like utilize i think i think that might be or, like a long-term solve reduce the amount of shit that you collect from people which will save you a lot of fucking money in the long run I mean, GDO, GPR uh, <laughs> applies if you get a username and password. Yes, but that's the, if you all you have is a username and password and email well, address. Is, like, so you you, you still it. you still that's need to actually do implement. All, that's all you got to store. No, that's all you have to maintain. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, 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 because no, that because you still need to actually implement some of the requirements, like right to be forgotten, all this stuff for the user data m- it's implementation for every it, fucking place. It is, it is, it is like logic that needs to be built into your into your authentication stack. So it's not, it's not super simple, even if you're just collecting a couple pieces. Also, of the right to be forgotten, no one automates that shit. You have to manually email it in and ask for it, and then I, they send you so an email I, I, back I, I, I was, to I was working in systems that needed to be GDPR <laughs> compliant. That that was a requirement that they needed to have an automated. Uh, oh, an that's automated. the thing in Canada that that needs to become no, a thing not, here. <laughs> it's not, it, it, it was for a European company. It wasn't for a, like the. Com- I was working for a company that was working for like telcos in Europe. They were doing like software for them. So like, yeah. So the, like, again, de- uh, to Ben's point, depending on who's your customer, depending on what your regions are, there may be different requirements. Either way, you actually do need to like write code to fucking do it. Somebody gets to do that for Helldivers, but hey, <laughs> yeah. um, but so, yeah, this is, I think that's telling because you notice that uh, Sony's like, we're not going to re-enable these games for purchases. And uh, what what is the God of War? Coming up, the new God of War. It's got a name after God of War, but we're, I was just good for. There, 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 there was, yes, a, there was a DLC that remember. came out. Is there, is, is there is there a new one coming out already? God of War Two. Well, yeah, it's coming to the PC. It's been on PlayStation oh, oh, Five. Oh, oh, mm-hmm. oh, oh, okay. No, they're, they're, oh, this is the PC release of the last one, Ragnarok. Okay, yes. yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, Ragnarok. Okay, sorry. And I thought I thought you were talking about a third God of War game. I got confused. yes. There's Wait, also Ghost of Tsushima out. that's coming. Ghost is coming out, and all of those will be linked to that from like day one. PSN network. So. But the, I mean, those, those are those are PlayStation games, so I guess it kind of makes sense. Even though, why does God of War require an account to buy? I don't single know. player game. Like, we're yeah, why, gonna... why'd you need uh, an internet connection for that single player game again? You might you might be cheating in your single player game. That's, right. that's not allowed. <laughs> and remember the solution: don't buy the fucking game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Vote with your wallet. Vote with your wallet. If you can't vote with your review. That is, uh, that's the way to rock and roll in our brave new world. Um, speaking of unpopular developer actions, we got, we got, a, we got another piece of hate mail, don't we? No, wait, no, well, oh, right. Pedro's we, we, favorite we, game. Yeah, we, we, this is from <laughs> Undernet Systems, and they're talking about League of Legends. They say, some of my friends and I were playing League of Legends of, on Linux until they rolled out this update. I get that we are breaking the Lutris install with our anti-cheat BS, but it also broke the version on my Windows 10 partition. Literally, their stupid kernel-level anti-cheat will, ne- will never report itself being active, even when running. I just quit playing the game. I'm not going to bother anymore. And that's the right fucking move! There you go. You can, that's, it's like that yes. fucking Deshare Zone thing. <laughs> you don't have to stick around. Hit the bricks. Fucking leave. Like, I'm just you don't to put up with anything. Like, and that sucks if you get, like, a friend group or shit like that. Like, do, I, do I just set up a Windows box to do this shit? Or, like, whatever like at some point the friction becomes high enough and we're like you know what fuck this nonsense yeah ju- ju- juice is not worth the squeeze yeah and they're not, like oh well you could always go and uh, go and play dota and you're like you know what maybe i should keep trying <laughs> I, I, i'm just gonna go play heroes of new earth okay <laughs> if, if you know if league was too toxic for you there's always han or sorry right. if league was not toxic enough for you there's always han right um, yeah it's don't seriously don't if a game clearly uh or the game developer in this case uh they put out an update that they clearly reveals they clearly do not care about you or your system or the work you put into that game go play something else please <laughs> i know it's, uh you gotta, gotta catch them young. give them a copy of roblox on android <laughs> on your steam deck on your steam deck <laughs> that's your Playing on your PC through remote play. <laughs> You're streaming it via Chiaki on your PS3. Fuck yes. We can keep going. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for tonight. We need to cue the music and say our good nights. You can always find this kicking off at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time right here on twitch.tv forward slash Linux Gamecast. Give us a follow. Come check out uh, my other little side project where I'm working on uh, a brand new HP Elite. That's not new. It's like four years old, but it's new to me. And I'm going to try to make it new to you as well over at interfacinglinux.com. Get in touch with me. All the social medias. I'm on the zitters. I'm just Vin Stone. And of course, Vin at mass.linuxgamecast.com. I technically have one of the blue sky things, but I haven't really found a use for it. I just mirror all of my the, the odd tweets I make on Twitter or, or Mastodon to it. Of which you can follow me on uh, at the Burning Fool on Twitter, at Frojo at bsky.app, or at Frojo at mass.linuxgamecast.com on the Mastodons. Mastodon! Yes, I, I am on Mastodon. You can find me at an account at four at mass.linuxgamecast.com with the actual number four. Uh, it, yeah, no, follow me there. If you post interesting things, uh, I will totally creep on your profile when you first follow me. So if you post interesting stuff, I'll follow you back. <laughs> Beautiful. Time for some credits. I mean, depending on if you follow, it could be both. Well, we got to thank our lovely, lovely advisors and producers flying into the stratosphere, into the supermassive black hole, or Megas Artheron. We got to thank Barbara Bram, Scott Michaud, Atomic Ass, Mike G, Tomas, Dave, Eshep, Ian, Kerducky, 12345, Hoplo, Drummer. We got to thank our Chicago Kickers ass tier, Super Dusto, Empty, Glorious Eggy, King Bonge, and Turbo underscore Tweet Loss. Street and the Sea Monsters, Renault, Rider X, Machina, Trudgy, Veritanu, the Justin Darkwing, System T, Dezinger, the Kresny, OG1! And Frost Frost Claw's back, baby. He's back. And the Death Notes, Nova, Chad, Romeo, Renee, Leonardo, Kim, Chris, Stephen, Jill, Benjamin, Doom 2, Watt, Stephen B, Beck, Dodger, Zeno, Rue, Turnover, Peb, M. Fox Dog, Swine, Jaleur, and Piper. Breathe, damn and, you. Uh, thank you very much to Zin for uh, being the new uh, Cheryling. Thank you very Carl, much. Carl, Mike, Earth, here in Linux, New <laughs> Orleans, Knuckles, Johnny, Ship, Gamatron, you know, DS, Intro, Aromatic, Devin, Kaijo, right? Thank you. For being fine, upstanding cannibals. You get bonus cannibals. Yeah. Uh, until next chomp, week. Chomp, chomp. Chomp, chomp. Chomp, You gotta eat the flesh. Canadian, Consume the flesh. Canadian Pac-Man himself. <laughs> Every, everything is... It, is I'm, everything I'm, just I'm, a Snickers bar? I'm constantly chased by ghosts. The ghosts of my past. It's the pills, of all the humans man. I've eaten. It's the pills. Dynafire, everyone. We'll see you next week. <laughs> Bye. Five dudes.